This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, fishing's dropped off a lot. I didn't go out in the sound. Uh, the local bay has not been very good. Uh, it's a mixed bag. Sea bass is open. Wouldn't mind getting a few decent ones of those. Uh, could get a decent fluke or two or maybe more and hey could be some stripers whatever yeah I'm gonna go fishing we'll see okay after a couple of unproductive drifts for fluke uh, I headed for the middle of the sound to go for, jig some sea bass uh, it's kind of deep out there I'm going for a heavier a 47 jig I'm also going for a sharpie marker to color this jig black and if you saw my recent video uh, with a jig color test and underwater video of what it looks like near the bottom in 60 feet of water Beconic Bay and here was the test it was with my brother uh, glow chrome versus black um, the background of this slide is a video frame recorded near the bottom in 60 feet of water Beconic Bay that's how much light there is it's black down there and in that dark environment uh, the chrome was was dismal compared to black and glow glow was actually the best we didn't fish it as long as the black um i'm not going to harp on this you can go look at that other video and, and see how this played out so given that this is 70 plus feet of water and the water clarity of the sound is not that great i suspect it's pretty dark down near the bottom so uh, yeah i want to make a black jig you know i've already messed this up um when I did the jig test in Beconic Bay, I had painted that jig black with some just Rust-Oleum spray paint. The Sharpie marker does not do the same thing. Uh, even once you get it all black, there's still a little bit of a shine there, and it, it kind of wears down. It was basically a chrome jig by the end of this little session. So, all right, live and learn. Um, when I want to use a black jig, I'm going to have to go spray paint it in advance and um, have a couple of black jigs made up that way. So uh, I spent some time out in an area where uh, you know, there's a fair number of people fish over a large area. They make very long drifts over some sand waves. And um, boy, it wasn't very productive for me. And I really prefer to jig. Yeah, I know if you put squid down there, you're going to get pounded. But you get a lot of smalls that way. Um, I find that the bigger fish come on uh, metal and you know this kind of method. So I wasn't getting anything with that bucktail teaser. I switched over to a gulp teaser, and that, that's what you saw, you know, whatever, whatever that was, like 10 seconds, and then immediately into a fish. All right, so the limit is 15 inches. We can only keep three. Uh, yeah, I make it 16 inches. Uh, 15, well, you hardly get any meat. Normally, I would even want to keep larger ones, but eh, it just wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't on a lot of fish, so figured 16 inches, get me a couple of fish, and uh, I can do this catch and cook video with uh, three 16-inch sea bass for sure. So I did that for about 45 minutes, and it, it just really wasn't working. I had one keeper, one short, so I just, I took a long ride. I went a couple of miles and searched around and found this one spot that um, had a little bit of irregular structure, but it looked like a lot of fish on the fish finder in a small spot. It, the motor's still running here because I kind of went over it and then hit it in reverse and dropped down and, and the rig never made it to the bottom and immediately it had a fish. So, and while I'm cranking this fish, I'm looking over and, you know, seeing some fish on the fish finder. So going to get this guy in the boat and um, going to go back up on that and when I see these fish again I'm going to drop the trolling motor and, and see if I can uh, use spot lock to stay over them. So this was actually a little bit over 15 inches but I'm going to let him go. Okay so I drove back over uh, and marked the fish again this time I dropped the trolling motor and hit spot lock. I'm just dropping down at the bottom and these are going to be my first bounces in here and Boy, it's just, it's not going to take long to hook up again. All right, I can tell it's a small fish, but hey, this is like the same productivity in two minutes that it took me 45 minutes 
to get before. So, uh, yeah, this is looking pretty good. So these A47 jigs weigh uh, just about four ounces. It, it works out actually quite well. This is the uh, the new John Skinner Dark Matter fluke rod, and uh, yeah, I mean I, I meant it for fluke, but yeah, this this is working out very well with the uh, with the diamond jig. And then hey, I can use the same outfit that I use for fluke, which is just really convenient. Um, I think it's really important to be using the, f the thin braided line out here. So this is 15. Uh, I think if you were using 30, this would be tough. Uh, this is deep water, and there's a fair amount of current. So, um, yeah, it's it's nice. I mean, I could just use my fluke rod, and I'm actually using the exact same rig that I use for fluke. You know, that same uh, loop at the bottom, another dropper loop a foot above that, and the dropper loop gets a teaser, and um, instead of putting a bucktail on the bottom loop, put on a diamond jig. So uh, anytime I can carry less stuff, uh, the better. All right, I'm getting hit like really quick when I get down, but the, the size just isn't there. So, all right, I've got my little micro remote there in my left hand, and I'm going to pull it off a spot lock, and I'm just going to motor a little bit because you know I don't know this spot, um, and and see if I can get over a different part of it because I know when I first went over with the uh, outboard running, I saw um, a little more pronounced structure with what looked like a bigger pile of fish. So just try and shift around a little bit, which is so convenient with the spot lock. You know, you, you hit a button, you you know, just go a little bit and then hit that anchor button again and you're automatically anchored on it. So I'm just going to try and jiggle around a little bit and see if I can get some better fish. All right, better, but... Not good enough. Going to move a little bit more. Um, hey, but at least I'm getting fish like almost instantly when I get to the bottom. Okay, good one for sure. So, uh, yeah, going to bleed him out. I always bleed out anything that I'm going to eat, and uh, he'll be part of the second part of this video when I cook him up. All right, that one's probably uh, technically a keeper, but let's see if I can get something a little bit better. Let's see if I can only keep three. It feels like a keeper. Definitely. All 
All right, so that's my limit, but I'm going to spend just a little more time on this. I don't want to, like, catch and release pound these things because of the depth. Um, but I kind of want to shift around a little bit on, on the spot and see, uh, just learn a little bit about it uh, for the next time. And so I'm going to just keep making little moves and, and trying to see, um, make some, get some marks on my plotter and see what the better spots look like. All right, finally one on the metal, and as, as it usually is, the biggest ones um, hit the jig. But you'll see this jig is basically all chrome now, and uh, in that jig test, chrome did very poorly. So I don't expect it to do well here um, either, and yeah, indeed, the gulp catching most of them. So look at that. Maybe there's a wreck or something. There's like a little bump on the bottom. Not quite sure what, what the deal is there, but certainly there's a lot of fish on this area, and... Uh, Boy, he just dropped down, and when you get positioned over it and lock on him uh, and drop down, boom, it's uh, instantaneous. So much better than just randomly drifting over miles of water. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time at this here. going to get out of here, and uh, I feel pretty comfortable that I've got it well marked on my plotter, and I can come back to this at some other point. Look at this. Look at this. It sure is good for this. All right, and these go back, and let's cook up the ones I kept. Okay, and here's those sea bass, all filleted and cut up and deboned and ready to go. Um, so one thing I want to point out is notice the coloration difference between this fillet and any of these. And you, you know what happened? I guess I did a bad job of bleeding this particular fish. You know, I bleed all the fish that I'm going to eat. This one I must not have cut well because uh, certainly you see that pinkish color um, when you bleed a fish out. You do it right, they should come out white. It'll, it'll be fine, but uh, I prefer it to be nice white meat like this. Okay, so I want cooking that's going to be as simple as possible. I don't want a lot of ingredients. I don't want some complicated recipe, and I certainly don't want to have to clean up a lot. Um, so, why there's a nice solution for this. It's called an air fryer. So this is the new dark matter air. Of course, it's not a dark matter air fryer. It's, uh, I think it's Gourmia. Um, so I've been playing around with this thing and uh, yeah, it works great and it makes cooking um, really simple. And geez, I really like fried fish, but it's always a mess and it's not the most healthy thing. So this is something that's way faster, way easier to clean up and it's healthier. So here you go. All right, so I've taken these, um, I've seasoned them. So just really simple stuff, some kosher salt, some black pepper, a little bit on both sides. You know, that's the kind of thing you season to taste and then this is mindless. All you need to do is take those seasoned pieces and I'm just going, I'm going to use olive oil, um, you know, and this is what's going to give it that fried kind of thing, but it's going to take a lot less oil and be a lot simpler to do. And then cleanup is kind of like non-existent. 
and that's it. I mean, you just, you take the fillets, you run them through that, you run them through some, I've got some uh, seasoned panko breadcrumbs. Uh, yeah, this is, boy, I'm, I'm really liking this because it just makes cooking fish so easy, you know, especially, boy, you know, you come home from fishing, if you want fresh fish, you gotta clean up the boat, you have to take care of everything. The last thing I wanna be dealing with is um, a complicated cooking recipe and then having to clean up after it. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through all these like you see me doing. And you know, this, is, uh, this was the three fish that you saw kept in the video. And um, then I'm gonna show you what's involved in cooking it in the air fryer. And it's about as uh, complicated as what you see here. It's a pretty simple device. Okay, so you can do a lot more with this uh, than fish. It's all kinds of things. And you can see they've got all these presets on here. Toast, bagel, bake, roast, broil, all of this stuff. Pizza, there we go. All right, so um, pretty simple. You turn it on and then you select which of these. And I want to air fry. So I push that button. And then it's just two things you need to select. One is the temperature and I'm going to knock that down to about 390. And the time, I'm going to put it 15 minutes, and this is going to, this fish is going to get flipped halfway through. Um, and at that point, you just kind of hit go. And it's going to preheat, and it will let me know when it's time to put the fish in. And in the meantime, I'll finish up breading these. Okay, it's beeping at me saying, add food. So, I'm just going to add the food. And you see, look at that, those uh, three sea bass fit perfectly there. All right. And got a couple of choices of where to put it, but I'm going to just stick it in the middle. Close it up. And then when this thing gets to, I don't know, seven minutes or so, um, I'm going to pull this out and flip it. We'll, we'll see that. And they do need to be flipped. I tried doing them without flipping them because I kind of couldn't understand why I needed to do that. But you do, and uh, they, they come out better if you flip them. Okay, so this is the one part I wish I didn't have to do. I wish I didn't have to flip them, but like I said, it seems like I do. So I'm going to go put that back on this, going to flip them around. And then if it takes me, you know, it takes me a little bit of time to do that, I'm just going to add a little more time to the timer. But you can see they're already cooking. Um, it, took, uh, I know I didn't show the preheat time, but it took maybe five minutes for it to preheat. So you can see as I'm flipping these, the top side is done uh, more than the bottom. So that's why they need to be flipped, else they would definitely be cooked unevenly. But yeah, if somebody could uh, invent one of these things where the flipping wasn't necessary. And I see all of the um, recipes call for flipping stuff in the middle so it makes makes sense all well, the fish recipes of this sort anyway all right I mean, not a big deal but I if I can pick that up get that back in Because that took a little bit of time, I'm just gonna add a minute. And that's that. I'll clean up and uh, I'm gonna be done. Okay, here comes lunch. Yeah, and that's that. Right, so get it on here. Okay, so um, as far as cleanup goes, this this little screen thing, they call it a basket, um, that's really all you need to do. And it, really, it's not much like, I'll like scrub it a little bit uh, underneath the faucet, but then it goes in the dishwasher and you're done. And that's the, you know, that's it for the cleanup. But yeah, this is, you know what, sea bass are really good eating too. So boy, this just turns out to be absolutely delicious. And uh, 
All right, so if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you are not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'd like to thank my friend, uh, Doc, for um, giving me this awesome air fryer as a housewarming gift because, boy, it's just, you know, I love eating fish and, you know, this makes it so much easier.